Dear God, thank you so very much for everyone that is gathered here today, both in person and online. We ask that you surround us with your powerful, life-changing presence. Thank you for loving each of us, God, and for calling us to walk with you. We ask that you open our hearts and our ears, clear our minds, so that we may hear that your message through me this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As most of you may know, my name is Autumn Hutchins. I am part of the praise team. I have been the worship leader for the past two years, but have been on the praise team off and on for the, the most of the time that the church has been in this building. Um, the reason I'm here today is because my friend Matt, who clearly decided to sneak out of the back door because he didn't want me to call him out, um, challenged me about six months ago. He said, I joked with him and said, hey, why don't you come up and sing with us? And he says, hey, why don't you do a sermon? I see him. <laughs> and I said, he said, when you come up and do a sermon, I'll get up on stage and sing. Well, you didn't see him on stage before, but we have one more song at the end, so I want Matt to come and sing with us. Um, so preparing this message, I realized how nervous I am speaking. And for my job, I am a superior court clerk, and so I have to read verdicts in front of hundreds of people, and I have to read them in front of strangers. And it's, it's a little easy to read something in front of strangers than it is in friends. I don't know why, but I asked God to give me confidence, and instead, he gave me Godfidence. So I have a little bit of confidence with a whole bunch of God, hence the shirt that I'm wearing. The reason I chose this sermon, which is called Service, is because we have a need in this church. We have the need in the world. Um, I read a quote a few months ago. The quote says, serving requires obedience and redirects our focus to Jesus. I felt that nudge when I read that um, quote. I, I, felt the quote I, I felt the nudge from God saying, hey, <laughs> you should give a sermon. I'm like, mm, mm not doing it. And I heard God say, yeah, you should give that sermon. And then sometime in November when Matt gave his message saying that he was going to step down, that was God basically pushing me, saying, hey, the church needs you to give a sermon. So here I am. What does service mean? Service in Google, oh, what's the difference between service and spiritual service? Google says service is defined as the action of helping others or doing work for someone, volunteering, helping others that have, a ser or that have a need. Spiritual service is choosing to do something for someone else without expecting anything in return, to do God's work, which includes doing what he commands us to do. But what does the Bible say? I'm going to work this clicker. Okay, perfect. I don't have it here, so I'm going to have to keep looking back. Sorry, y'all. Peter, uh, in 1 Peter 4, the Bible says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have a gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have a gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies, then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus set the ultimate example of what it means to serve others. As Christians, our main priority in life is to follow in Jesus' footsteps and serve God. However, as our lives get busy, and we juggle priorities, it is not always easy to know the best ways to do that. What does service mean to you in your everyday life? Are you serving? Have you had that little nudge from God to serve and you don't quite know what to do or where to serve or even how to serve? We, as a people, a people of God, every single person here, whether we're online or in person, should look to Jesus' life to learn from him and follow his example. 
Romans 12, 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will, for which is good, pleasing, and perfect. As you serve others, God can change the way that you think without you even realizing it. I see it here in this building every Sabbath. I see it in myself. I'm not the same person I was two years ago when I started this, the worship leader. Um, my close friends and worship leaders probably could attest to that. The Bible says that every person here is called to serve. The call, this calling remains constant throughout our lives. Sometimes as our lives go through different seasons, the way that we need to serve also changes. When I was younger and a little less tired, my calling was to serve in the children's ministry, specifically to serve, to take care of an autistic child. This young man had my heart. And my serving in this capacity allowed his parents to go be fed by, by the word of God. While I loved serving in that capacity, it's not what I'm able to do now. So I serve on the praise team. I don't know if you've noticed, but this church family is growing. Praise God. This church started with a handful of people 10 years ago, and now we have an average of 75 to 80 people that come weekly. Today, y'all showed up. I don't know if I've seen the church this full in a long time, and I don't know if it can't be me. Most of you don't know me, but thank you. Amen. As we continue to grow, the need for service also continues to grow. Isn't that a blessing? Can I get an amen? Amen. Awesome. So, I want you all to get out your phones, and I want you to text the number that's on the screen and answer the question. The question's going to read, what ministries are you interested in helping here at TAF? This number will remain on the screen for a few more minutes. While you're texting that number, let me tell you a little bit about the areas that you can serve in this church. We have the breakfast ministry. If you guys come a little bit late and didn't get breakfast at home, We've got snacks and donuts and water and coffee and tea, and it's always a blessing to have a little snack. I run out of the house often without a snack, so I rely on the blueberry donut that gets provided to me every week. Um, we have the children's ministry, and we range from preschool all the way through high school. There's four classes currently, but as you can see, all of the children that were up here this morning, we're going to need more classes, which means we're going to need more teachers. Um, this coming Easter Sabbath, there's going to be a children's ministry meeting after lunch. So if you even have that little nudge from God, I encourage you to stay after lunch and meet with the children's ministry. We have community service at the men's shelter. They meet every other month on the third Thursday. That I have been able to experience one or two times, and it is humbling and amazing. I encourage you to do that if you've not done that. Um, we have deacons who open and close the church and they pick up the offering. We have deaconesses who do meals for families that are in need and do special events. A few weeks ago, we had a baby shower for a family here and it was fun and thankfully the deaconesses took care of that. We have elders who work directly with the pastor on the spiritual direction of this church. We have the finance department. Currently, it's a finance department of one, but I am certain that he would be willing to allow someone else to help him crunch the numbers. And we have greeters. Greeters welcome everybody that comes in the building, especially the visitors. It's important that we make contact with visitors because that's how we grow. We want to make contact and show our love to those who come to this church and get fed by God. We have the homeless community, you've heard, or the homeless ministry. You've heard many times in the last few months about the homeless ministry. It is growing. The need is growing. Um, we currently serve on the weekends. I think right now it's Friday. It may change to Saturday. The, the, I don't know that part yet, but we do serve at the Center City Park in Greensboro every weekend, and we provide food and clothing to the homeless community. We have potluck and lunch. That is my favorite thing to do here. Um, I, I like being fed by God, don't get me wrong, but I love the food. We have so many good cooks here, and they provide amazing food. And you can be one of that, those people. You could provide food. You could set up the tables. You could break down the tables. You could clean up. There's always a need there. Um, the worship team. The worship team consists of three groups. We have the praise team, who you saw singing and playing. We have the sound booth, who makes us sound good. If we don't sound good, it's their fault. We also have 
cameras. The cameras are the ones that help us be on the social media, on the videos, so that if you aren't able to come in person, you get to see us online. We have Sabbath school. Currently, we have four Sabbath schools. We would love for that to grow as people are interested in Sabbath schools. Currently, we have the quarterly, and we have new believers. It's not really new believers, but it's there for new believers. And then we have a Spanish class, and then we also currently have a 12-week session that is going on, and it's a blessing. Last but not least, um, the only one, the last one that I'm going to mention today is our communication group that's the online presence. So if you have social media and you've seen the text messages or the messages on social media or you get the texting blast or the emails, we have a communication department that handles all of that and they always have a need. So for everyone who is currently serving here at TAP, can I ask you all to please stand for a moment? Everyone. There's more of you out there. Awesome. Can we all take a moment and say thank you? You are the reason why this church is continuing to go grow. You are the reason why we are blessed every Sabbath. You can be seated. We just talked about some of the areas within the church that you can serve, but what about how you can serve every day? The Bible says you can pray for each other. Ephesians 6.18 says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. When preparing for this sermon, my nerves were shot. Um, so much so that I had the devil attacking me. He was giving me doubt and fear and anger. And I was at the point where I was ready to walk away from the praise team, which I love to do scared to death so what did I do I called my dad asked my dad to pray for me and he did what's amazing is after that prayer 45 minutes it took 45 minutes I said I called him back and oh, no 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 I'm sorry I called him back when I was done but 45 minutes after my prayer with my dad all of the anxiety just went away like I could feel it draining from my bones and then within an hour and a half, I had my entire sermon written. Praise God. So then, of course, I call my dad, and he's like, wow. So praying for each other, it's important. You can share and give those in need. The homeless community is not the only place that you can do. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 16, and don't forget to do good and share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. I just started back at the courthouse a few weeks ago, and there's a homeless gentleman that sits outside of the, of the building every morning. And the first couple weeks, he would ask me for money, and I, I'm, I just don't give money. But what I can do is give him a banana or an orange or some crackers. And so now I intentionally pack an extra banana or crackers, and I give it to him. So while I might, need, I might want that banana, he needs that banana. So I give it to him, and that's something I, it's just a small little thing I can do by serving God. You give encouragement. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.11, so you sir, so encourage each other and build each other up, just as you are already doing. A friend shared with me a quote this week. It says, when you're going through something hard and you wonder where God is, remember, the teacher is always quiet during a test. Wow. That was an encouragement that I didn't even know I needed until she sent it. Praise God for moments like those. You can work with intention and joy. In Philippians 2, 14 through 15, it says, Do everything without complaining and arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. You can spread the word of God. Psalms 96, 3 says, Publish his glorious deeds Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Mark 10, 45 says, for even, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as ransom for many. Having a serving heart 
gives us purpose and courage in life. It brings us closer to God. It teaches us to love and to understand each other. It helps us forget about our personal desires, eliminating selfishness, pride, and ingratitude. Serving is a powerful act of devotion, a way to express our love for God and our gratitude for his mercy and grace. Matthew 7, 12 says, Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. Oops, I forgot. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the Law and Prophets. In conclusion, while preparing for this sermon, I learned that one of the easiest ways to follow Jesus is to do what he did. Jesus tells us that he came to serve, not to be served. Being obedient in this way gives us the opportunity to get to know Jesus on a whole new level because we get to express, experience firsthand his love for others. The remainder of our service is going to be the communion service that will include foot washing, breaking of the bread and drinking of the wine, in our case, grape juice. Washing of the feet is the act of humility and Jesus' example to follow in his footsteps. I ask you all to make sure that you participate in washing of the feet if you have not done that before. For those of you that are online, that have joined us online and weren't able to come here in person, happy Sabbath. We'll see you next week. We're going to turn off the live stream because the next several minutes are going to be off camera. Thank you. <laughs>